are at the ranger station coming up right directly in front of us and there comes jason but we're gonna drive through the parking, cut through the parking lot here. And we are just right over there in that loop and we're in number 50. And uh, from that point, uh, we will just get ourselves like all kind of unhitched real quick because we have to go to Walmart for a provision run. And the other cool thing is because we are actually camping here, we don't even have to go down to the inner tube place that trams the public up the spring. We literally just go right where that little cart just went. Right there is a swimming hole only for the campers. And you can also buy your uh, inner tubes there and you can also rent kayaks and canoes. And then you just float down the spring to the tubing place and then they will bring you back to here. So we don't even have to drive down to the public part, which is amazing. So uh, anyway, there's so much to do here, guys. We need to get back in the RV right now and get over to our campsite and start unhitching and get everything all set up. So we'll see you in a little bit. Well, guys, we made it to Rainbow Springs. And the camp host is right next door to us named Peggy and I was talking to her briefly and she told us that we are in one of the two best sites here at Rainbow Springs. As you can see this site is massive and it is just covered in beautiful shade trees. This site is 103 feet long. Can you believe that guys? 103 feet. The other great thing about Rainbow Springs is that they are a state park with full hookups. So we have water, sewer, and power. Most state parks are usually just power and water. Oh, look at that. We just got a cool little rainbow glimmer there across. And that is such a perfect segue because we have our little rainbow windsock hanging out. Here is our campsite and we decided to park a little bit closer into this area because we wanted to be closer to the shade trees. We can't pull that awning out and that's okay because we have all the shade, but we wanted to have the fifth wheel kind of be the focal point into this really awesome little open area that we have here but we've got a picnic table a fire pit and they even have a grill for you we're gonna cut through here and I'll take you around to the other side but look how massive this spot is but right over here we haven't taken our bikes down yet and I'm just gonna back up a little bit so you can see this side but there's the sewer, and there's power and water. And right over here is the camp host. And I was talking to them. They're going to be here for about four months. So let me just come around this way to show you guys how big this spot is. But I mean, look at that. It's massive. I actually have room in the front to park the truck, which I did, but we drove into town. Uh, so I decided to park the truck in the back and I mean it's massive you could actually put two RVs in here and you could actually put a car up front as well so uh, the spot is huge and it is so beautiful now as far as cell service we are on T-Mobile and we are only getting one bar it is enough to kind of surf the internet uh, we tried to stream with it not having any luck at all but we are getting some over the air channels so we do have a little bit of uh, entertainment as far as you know to watch some tv in the evenings or whatever but you know we are glamping so we'll probably light a fire later and have that be our entertainment along with some cocktails but right here you can see we are in site number 50 and then we were also told right over here Site 51 is also 
the other really good site. She said it's nice and large and it's shaded, but we're here for five days. So we're gonna be here for a nice long time and we're really, really excited about it. All right, and there's some primitive campers. Good morning, how are you? But they have a really nice setup with the tent and everything. Check that out, they even have like a freezer and all that. Look at that, that's cool. So we basically just went around the loop and here we are again, kind of hidden away in a beautiful shaded spot. And for me personally, it's so easy to tow it through there. And that's Peggy back there. She's actually sitting in the tent. And then right over here are the bathrooms. But as you can see, this park is beautifully maintained. Just beautiful. But I'm walking actually up to the front office because one of the big draws here at Rainbow Springs is that they have tubing on the river and also kayaks and canoes. And I'm going to go in and go ahead and pay for our tubing. It is supposed to get up to 100 degrees today, so the weather couldn't be more perfect than tubing down a beautiful, lazy river. But the drop-off is here. It's 20 bucks a person, and it's an all-day pass, so you can go as often as you want. And then there's a tram two miles down the river from here that will for free bring you back up here to your campsite and if you want you can hop right back on the tube and you can go down the river up the river as many times as you want last call is at three o'clock which makes sense because it takes about two hours to float down the river so by the time you get back down to the drop-off area it will be about five o'clock and the tubing place closes at 5 30. But here's the big open parking lot. And then right over here are the dumpsters. And then down there is the road entrance into the park. And then right over there is the dump station, if you prefer to do that. And then right over there where you see that truck coming out, that is loop B and loop C. But now we are going to go into the park office because this is also where the store is located. And we are going to get some inner tubes rented for the day. Woohoo, it's going to be a great day for it too. Now all this stuff right here is historical, just so you know. Um, this is stuff that was in storage buildings and stuff of the park in the past. Oh, okay. Um, okay. So there are actual signs, like yeah. I said, that we found in storage buildings. Um, old brochures from years and years. Oh, wonderful. Um, and this, I point this out to everybody because it cracks me yeah. up. Yeah. If you look how old, look what the telephone number is. Oh, wow. That's crazy. That's actually how phone numbers were? I guess so. Just, just what? It's... What, like a letter and and a number? Oh my gosh, that is too funny. 134-J. And, and, and even, I'm, I'm sorry, even the picture is funny. Oh, sure. Sure. This is so vintage. I love this. So, that's what all this is. <laughs> Lunch menu. Oh, okay. Really know what year, but yeah, sure. Cracks me up, hamburger Oh, wow. Pictures and attractions they had. This is a diorama that was actually in the 1964 World's Fair in New York to advertise Rainbow Springs at the time. Um, so this is... Oh, my God. It even... <laughs> it still works. Yeah. The only one that doesn't work is the fish. The most wow. is gone. That is so cool. And the boat still moves. So they actually had like the underwater like ballerinas mm -hmm. and stuff going on too. Mm -hmm. Now we've been to Silver Springs and right. went on the glass bottom boats and right. we were told that, you know, uh, uh, one reason um, 
it still has that old school charm too is because it was uh, like here I guess very popular back in the 20s 30s and 40s and uh, we were told by one of the rangers that the reason why all the wild monkeys are there mm -hmm. is that they escaped from the old Tarzan movies yeah. well, which was cool not only the Tarzan movies they actually when it was attraction they had a monkey island okay and they put them on an island because uh, the monkeys can swim if absolutely if they get thrown in the water but they do not like it but um, as the park started getting more run down and run down and less people, even though you're on an island, you gotta remember that tree limbs grow this way and tree limbs grow this way. So they never even had to touch the water. They were escaping off the island by jumping from tree to tree. Okay, that makes um, sense. And of course, you know, now most of the roadside attractions like here, Rainbow Springs, uh, Silver Springs, Homosassa Springs, Wikiwachi, and Six Gun Territory, which just never made it, um, were very popular pretty much until they built I-75 and Disney World opened. Even though we were winding down here at this park in the early 70s, as soon as Disney opened, that was pretty much it. Yeah. Um, and uh, luckily, all of them that I mentioned, the state has been able to take them over except Six Gun Territory and disappeared. Sure. Oh, that's wonderful. I mean, this is a national treasure. Very cool. So is that like a free book exchange? Yes, That's exactly what that is. And wow. I, I think this has probably got to be one of the favorite state parks we've been to yet. And we've been to a lot of state parks. But this is just so well maintained and immaculate. I mean, they've thought of everything. I mean, that's great. They provide like a, on the honor system, a magazine and a book exchange. And Todd just got a book he's going to read. We're actually expecting, I think on Saturday and Sunday, it's supposed to be kind of rainy and drizzly, which is fine because we came here to relax. Cedar Key was more about really walking around and getting crazy and going to restaurants and exploring, whereas Rainbow Springs, we're just kind of hanging out and having a great time. And speaking of having a great time, I thought I would bring you guys into the store and it is right next door to the park office where we just saw the lovely ranger and you can see it's a basic little camp store and they pretty much have everything here and what a better place to be than rainbow springs where there's just rainbows everywhere we love it and we hope you guys are loving it too but yeah, this is a really nice store. They pretty much just have all the basics. They've got some t-shirts and stuff too. Your basic camping supplies in case you run out of something. And I'm guessing right over here, if you rent a canoe or kayak, these are the life vests and the paddles that they give you to take down to the water. Ooh, and they have ice cream. Got some soda. Oh, they've got some beautiful like sun hats. Here's the front desk. Oh, check it out. They even have a Christmas tree. <laughs> That's really cute. Woohoo! All right. Everyone in there was so friendly at Rainbow Springs. Okay, so we paid for our inner tubes. And now we are walking back to our house to put on our bathing suits. And then we are going to grab our inner tubes and life jackets and head down. We are very excited. But I'm just bringing you around the other side of the loop 
And check that out, guys. Right there's an Airstream. Beautiful. We were actually looking at Airstreams, and we've been in quite a few, but they just don't have storage. That was the big downfall. You know, if they made an Airstream that had some storage, we'd be on it. All right, and here's the fifth wheel here. But even, even the, uh, the other sites that aren't shaded and stuff, you can see they're pretty much at the back ends. They're at an angle. So they're very, very easy to just pull up and then back in instead of trying to do like a 90 degree turn. And then right over there is Peggy. Hi, Peggy. Doing good. How are you? And this is her little setup. But she's the camp host. They're going to be here for four months. Well, guys, we're going to go and enjoy the day. So we're going to wrap up this video. And until next time, you guys have a glamtastic day. And stay tuned for the next video. Oh, and always, please like and subscribe. And tell your friends. Because we have the best subscribers out there. And thanks to all of you guys. You're just helping our little channel grow. And all of the comments that you leave us just make our hearts glow. So thank you again, guys, and we'll see you around soon. Leave a comment to say hi. If you like us, please subscribe. And if you don't, our little fluffy dog will attack you. Arr!